I, I think probably the, the, it sort of happened when I was about 13, 14. I was at Holland Park School and there was a, a, a teacher who, who particularly liked my work and, and she suggested going to art school. And that was the first time I even thought that you know, new things like art schools, because I mean, we'd only came down a few years before that from, I was, my, my parents, we were in a refugee camp in, in um, near Crewe in the north of England for 11 years. And uh, I mean, you know, everyone thought they were going back to Poland for year, for, for the initial sort of few years. And I didn't speak Polish, um, English till I was about seven. So, you know, it was a kind of little sealed world there in, in up in, in the camp. And so when, when I we came down to London, and went to, I mean, Holland Park was an amazing school. Uh, it probably still is, but it was just started as a, in this, you know, comprehensive. So the art rooms were amazing and, and you know, really good teachers. And um, she said the first time um, I, I thought of going to art school and, 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 and perhaps being an artist. And to be honest, there wasn't anything else I was really good at. <laughs> I think that at one uh, um, point, uh, the sort of, uh, one of the teachers or the, or the, or the sort of, you know, um, in the future, what you could be doing suggested working in a bank. And I mean, that was just a laughable because I mean, I didn't even get sort of O-level <laughs> maths. So. Um, uh, but anyway, um, I, I persevered there with, you know, mainly concentrating in the art room. I mean, I think I did A-level. I think the only, it was the only A-level I did was art. And, um, and then I applied to Chelsea, didn't get in. Uh, but applied to Camberwell as well and did get in, which um, in those days had a very kind of academic um, sort of uh, people like you, Uglo were working there. He was one of my teachers where, you know, it was very sort of um, a, a kind of academic drawing, uh, which was a, a great foundation in, in a way, but kind of limited at the same time. And I found it quite difficult. Uh, I had other, other sort of things I wanted to paint and things. And and so I didn't I didn't actually get into in, into when I applied to Camberwell, but as as with these things, sometimes the best things happen when you fail. And and um, uh, a friend said, "Oh, my brother's down in Falmouth, you know, and he really loves it." And uh, you know, why did you get applied there? And I did, and got in. Though it had a you know the same kind of there was its lecturers there, teachers who had the same kind of ideas about, about painting as, as Camberwell. There were others, in particular a poet called um, Peter Redgrove, who introduced me to um, poetry, um, uh, surrealism, um, and particularly trusting your unconscious. He was very keen on, on sort of all these kind of surrealist games, like, uh, uh, you know, sort of writing things down, folding them over, somebody else joining it. And so we would play all these games and then, you know, you, you could you do that visually and with words and so forth. And 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 um, it kind of liberated me from, from this. Literally, I started working with my left hand because before I was kind of trained with this right. I started drawing with my left and that seemed to, for a while, I mean, in, in the end, it became just as... as, as, as uh, as formulaic so one had to sort of you know try other things but um it gave it gave me a kind of access to the to, to my inner world which which previously had been sort of concentrating really on, on the on the outer world I don't know, I, I got lost. Some, somehow in the second year, I started making films. I thought I couldn't sort of paint these things that I, I was drawing. And I mean, I was drawing a lot, but I couldn't, I couldn't paint them. Um, and I started making films. And there were very sort of simple things, like I'd go into a house with, with a few friends and, and we, would, we would kind of, um, it was a, sort of in a sense, it was about ghosts and there was kind of, noises going off those shadows uh, it was a kind of in a sense trying to evoke that you know there had been a sort of presence there or still was and you know where was it and I, I was trying to capture these sort of odd thoughts that I had and you know this would seem to be the only way but they didn't like the films and uh, in the second year I was I was I was asked to leave um which which was a rather a bit of a shock so so the next next three years I spent and again, like like the best things, you know, failure brings success, you know, in, on, on, in a different way. And um, 
I stayed in, in Cornwall. We moved to a place called Zena and um, worked in St. Dyes for a while on the beach in the summers. And other times I worked as a photographer at Land's End. And, you know, so we managed and, and gradually, I mean, I was then, um, I was together with, a, uh, with my first wife, who was a poet. Uh, we started sort of making um, poetry readings and I started making kind of slides for the, for the readings and gradually got more and more kind of involved in a kind of visual world and, in, and, and started painting again. I, I sort of got a studio. Um, I met uh, Roger Hilton in, down there and he was very encouraging. I mean, it's, it's always, these, you know, you, you get somebody who sort of says, oh, well, that's interesting. And that kind of makes you think, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pursue this, this line. And, and, uh, and I, then I, you know, showed a few paintings at the Penworth in St. Ives during the summer. And one of my tutors from Falmouth saw this exhibition and said, oh, you know, you're painting again, you know, why don't you come back? So in the third year, in my, I did my third year. After three years, I went back. And again, one of these fortuitous things, the external assessor at that time was Peter de Francia, who was the professor at the Royal College. And he said, oh, you're doing some interesting things, you know, why don't you uh, apply to the Royal College? Which I did. And, and I got in and, you know, and, and things kind of, in a sense, kind of, went off from there I mean, not literally you know kind of you know there's there's all sorts of other setbacks but um it was the kind of sort, sort of in a sense gave me a, a sense that you know i could i could perhaps be a painter yeah um well that uh, particular sequence uh, that drawing that's in the show the british museum show pushing paper um is one of 60 drawings um which um, came together in sort of between 2011 and 2012. Um, I was asked with um, Julian Bell and Tom Hammock uh, by the British Muse uh, British Muse Brighton Museum um, to show some work uh, at, at the museum. And um, originally, I was going to show some painting, but um, paintings. But um, we were in the process of moving to where we where, where I'm living now in the country, and. Um, and I felt I couldn't really ha do the, the paintings in that time and, and do all the other things. So what I did was um, I looked at, I, I was wondering where to start and how to, how to do this show. And I came across some drawings I did in oh, 2003, so several you know, years earlier. And I was looking through this and I saw this photograph of a man sitting in a hold of a boat. Uh, he was sort of either writing a letter or he was reading a, a diary. Um, there was a sort of ladder behind him, there was, he was sitting at a desk, there was a bed there, uh, it was a kind of wooden kind of space, very, very sort of tight, there was, there was even a bucket with, a, with, a, um, with some rope, and as soon as I saw it, in a sense, I, I, I sort of felt it was a kind of dream space, what I call a dream space, which, which certain things, certain objects, certain uh, relationships angles come together and seem to sort of form some sort of uh, space in my head which or some thought in my head and so I did some drawings and and left it at that and then when I was thinking of this exhibition I looked through my folder and saw these drawings and I thought well I could I could use this space as a sort of as a, as a kind of theater which I could then fill with with with, with other things going on so I said so I decided that I would work and so I do two drawings a week uh, which I think they took about nine months you know, with, with sort of teaching and, and, and holidays and stuff. Uh, but it, it was systematic. I would start two drawings on Indian paper, um, just charcoal, and then use some some uh, um, linseed oil and varnish to sort of draw the, 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 the lines in and perhaps a touch of colour. And use this space and then just see what, what entered it. And, and just leave it at that start on Monday, work on Tuesday, I'll, I'll teach uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then finish it, finish it on Friday. And whatever was on Friday, that was it. Just put it away. And so I did 60 drawings like that in that time. And this sequence opened up, but it was, it was quite remarkable how the unconscious, in a sense, um, allowed me to introduce all sorts of different figures, different relationships, different stories. So when I finished that, I showed that at, at the, at the, um, at the Bright Museum. And they kind of worked, um, not only kind of uh, going across left to right or right to left, whichever way you want to read it, but kind of vertically, there were sort of four or five de up, up because of the ladders, they seemed to sort of, in a sense, you could, you could read them up and down.
Well, one of the things I, I, I what did want to say is, and I, as I, I say to students, is, is that root, one routine helps. I think people getting people sometimes kind of wait for inspiration or um, you know waiting for the moment. When in fact, I think for me, particularly the unconscious works in that if you kind of have specific times where you start work. It's usually it's usually something happens, or sometimes I you know I wait a whole day and, and kind of have the last ten minutes just before I have to go something happens. So it's if you're there something you know so you you've got to turn up at the studio, but but as as well is 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 not to worry about sort of showing. I think one of the things that you know um, is 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 to is to let in a, in a way the influences and your voice in a, in a way kind of appear slowly not to sort of push the the the, the idea of uh getting the work out i think it's more important that you develop uh y y your own kind of idiom your own your own voice your own visual voice so to speak and 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 then and, and then kind of get the work out one of the best advice i was given by the professor when i left the royal college i said you know how do i get exhibition how do i get you know and so don't worry about that you know just go and do the work in the studio and and and, and you know, things will happen from that. It's the work that's important. Yeah.